Hello, everyone. Uh, today we're talking about getting started with Drupal. Uh, my name is Brian Pitchman, and I'm part of a group called the Evolve Project. Uh, so today our focus is learning about Drupal. Um, hopefully, uh, all of you will leave today learning how to build your own website using Drupal. Um, to kind of kick us off, though, what what is Drupal and why why do I want to use it, or why is it important or relevant for website design? Um, big picture. Uh, Drupal is a content management system, uh, meaning that it will help you uh, store files, store content, and display it for the end users, whether that's your customers, uh, partners, or uh, internal internal employees, internal users. When we talk about old web, when we talk about websites, um, the old way was very much scripted. Um, on the left, you might you might recognize that as HTML code. Um, while that code still exists. People use content management systems to type that code for you so you don't have to know how to make a text bold or how to make a title appear on a page. Content management system does all that work for you, as well as the picture on the right is an FTP client where you're uploading files to your web server. Um, when you're utilizing a content management system, that isn't relevant. You don't have to log into some some server somewhere in the world to uh, upload files. Instead, you do it all right through the CMS as it's abbreviated. This is the more modern way of building a website. Um, you have a you have a backend uh, method to access your website web page, and you're able to add text. Most content management systems also have what's called a WYSIWYG, or what you see is what you get is what it stands for. Um, the WYSIWYG allows you to do bold, italics, underline, add a picture, do all those things that you would like to do without having to code for it or having to know how to code. On top of that, then the content management system will organize that content and data based on how you uh, set those thresholds or, or meanings for it. Uh, feel free to ask questions throughout this uh, presentation, either, either through the uh, chat um, or the QA feature. Um, whatever is easiest, uh, I'd like to be interrupted, so feel free to do so. Um, the more questions you ask, the more value you get out of it. Uh, so a content management system as a whole uh, manages everything from pictures, PowerPoints, PDFs, whatever you want to manage and share and distribute, your CMS can do. Uh, it also organizes web pages, and I'm putting web pages in quotes, uh, is because anything that you put on the website, we're going to just call a web page just for simplicity. Your content management system can also be themed, uh, meaning you can add really cool fonts, graphics, and logos that copy throughout the entire website. Um, it gives it that design feel. Uh, in general, one of the best analogies of a content management system or a website in general uh, is a digital repository. So anything you want to share, whether that's information about who you are, what you do, or what you want to sell, or actual content, if you're selling videos, movies, um, dog furniture, whatever it may be, your content management system manages that for you. There's a lot of different content management systems out there. Um, so there's Drupal, WordPress, and Joomla are the big three, um, but we're gonna focus on Drupal. Any of those systems, however, can do these things. Um, so you can build using Drupal, um, you can build an internet for employee records or just general information, HR pages. Um, if you needed an intranet uh, so employees can talk to each other. A content management system can do that. Uh, I've used back way back when before there was actual ticketing systems out there that were relatively inexpensive. I built my own in Drupal where people can submit tickets and respond to requests and, and uh, projects. Other people use it as a CRM or a customer relationship management. So think of Salesforce. Um, you can build Drupal to work very similar to how Salesforce works without having to spend Salesforce money, uh, which is thousands of dollars. Um, you can also design your content management system to sell things like run like your own eBay store. Uh, I mentioned it before, digital repositories. If you wanted people to listen to music, watch PowerPoints, look at videos, whatever it may be, it's a repository of data. Um, people use content management systems like Drupal um, for blogs. Uh, when we say blogs, that's people putting like journal notes uh, onto the internet for people to read, whether it's a blog about cooking, a blog about traveling, uh, a blog is just informational posts. Um, most people that blog can use WordPress, however, um, but you can set up Drupal to work just like a WordPress blog. 
And last but not least is the obvious informational website. You want to talk about your business, talk about yourself. Um, people use content management systems to accomplish that, or in our case, Drupal. Um, so here's, a, here's an image of a content management system for an internet built on top of Drupal. Um, so if you have a SharePoint site, um, it would look somewhat similar to this um, if it's designed uh, well. Um, and so your Drupal page could be everything that you need for an internal company database where people can uh, fill out time cards, view HR policies and documents, um, get resources, see their um, employee benefits, all those things. On the other side of the coin, this is a Drupal example of what a uh, ticketing system might look like, uh, where people can submit requests, or in this example, chats. Um, people have also used it for, like, like I mentioned before, like a Salesforce vibe. Um, and so this is probably the closest thing I've ever ran into that looks like Salesforce and feels like Salesforce, um, where you can do embedded messaging. You can, you can download and import a list of all your customers uh, track their trends, what are they buying, what are they looking at, if you're generating leads, all that can be built into your Drupal platform. Um, or selling items, um, whether you're selling things that you've created like an Etsy or things that you own like, like eBay, you can use your Drupal website to do that. Um, so I, I, I'm including links in these PowerPoints will be shared as well. Um, so feel free to copy what you need, uh, don't write everything down because the PowerPoints are available. Um, in fact, I will post the PowerPoints into the chat right now. Um, so that's uh, selling items. Um, next page. Or if you really wanted something uh, simple, simplistic, if you're doing showing casing like images or doing that digital repository idea, um, there's a free Drupal theme called Sensillo that kind of, that does that, um, that gives you that really nice view viewpoint of how do I want to display content that I've created to the masses. Or if you wanted to do something very simple like a blog, um, there are uh, modules and essentially you can download or theme, theme packages that allow you to make your website look like a very simple tip blog about things you're doing or things that matter to you. Um, and there's just an example of uh, a library that's local to me that runs a Drupal website. And this is what their web page looks like, all running on Drupal. And you wouldn't even, you can't really tell. Um, but this was a, a theme that people were able to get and import their own content into uh, without having any coding experience, without knowing how to code in PHP, just using the, the tools that are inside of Drupal to make it happen. Uh, a couple useful links. Um, so the first thing we're, we're all going to demo today, um, so there's a website called simplytest.me that allows you to not only test like different plugins if you weren't sure how it works, um, but you can also run full-blown Drupal websites 100% free. But they're temporary, so don't use them for production. Um, and we're going to use that today to help people demo and understand the uses of Drupal. Um, when we talk about themes, um, theme forest has probably, and I, I, I use ThemeForest if I'm building websites for other people, because um, they have a lot of really great paid templates that you purchase that you can then host on your own website that run on Drupal. And then lastly, uh, my background is a lot of presentation with libraries. So I always include, for those that follow me, um, here's a link for library related resources. If you're a public library, here's a great tool set of all the things that you would need. So what is Drupal and why do we care? So as we talked about earlier today, the idea of using Drupal is just your content management system. Um, it gives you a, a platform to create a website without having a lot of technical skills. Uh, I always like to say, if you, can, if you use Facebook, you know how to use Drupal um, from the sense of uploading content and creating content. Drupal gets tricky when we start talking about things like called modules, um, where we're installing plugins, as it were, to make your website do more than just being a website. Um, if we wanted to look at Drupal users um, across all the, so there's three main versions of Drupal out currently. Um, there's seven, eight, and nine. Uh, nine was just released, I want to say, a few weeks ago. Um, so it's relatively new. Most people are running Drupal 8. Um, so there's over a million websites out there in the wild um, that are reporting statistics of them running a Drupal website. 
with most people running uh, version 8.8.x. The reason why I like to show this slide, um, is so if you're looking at what version to use, I always caution people that the latest and greatest isn't always the best. Um, because keep in mind that people develop things like plugins to use on your Drupal website. Um, so if you think of these version numbers like Windows operating, operating systems, um, you have Windows 7, Windows 8, and Windows 10. Uh, Windows 10 is the 9.0, um, so it's still pretty new. It doesn't have a big adoption rate. In fact, you see a, the adoption rate kind of drop um, from the last few weeks. And so that gives you a, a hint that people moved to it and necessarily didn't really enjoy it and dialed back. Um, the second slide uh, shows you all the different, or uh, the top modules that are available or top plugins that you can install onto your Drupal website. Um, so the most popular ones are listed. There's over 45,000 modules that you can install. And again, modules allow you to extend the functionality of your Drupal website. So you can have a module that allows you to sell things. You can have a, a module that connects to, or an integration that connects to a third party service like Google Analytics. Um, but this lets you know some of the popular modules and, and then you, all you have to do is you click on them to see what they do. And the link for that is I listed at the bottom. Now I, I mentioned early, on an earlier slide, you saw that Drupal was a free open source uh, software that you can install on a website. And I always like to tell people, when the people talk about open source, what they really mean is free like kittens. Nothing in the world is actually free. Um, so when you, like, oh wow, I learned from Brian today that Drupal's free, I'm gonna go get started. You'll need to, you still have to pay something to someone. Um, so you either need to pay someone to install or set up uh, a Drupal website, or granted, you can do it yourself, but then again, your, your fee is your own time. Um, for maintenance and updating the website, you still need to pay or do it yourself to do so. So there's an intrinsic cost if you're doing it alone, and then the, the, the obvious cost is you need a, still need a hosting provider. You need someone to host your content for you so you can let the world see it. So the Drupal framework, I break it down into four main buckets. Uh, we have things called themes. And the, again, those themes allow you to add color, layout, and design to your website. Um, a theme is important because otherwise your website looks pretty boring. Um, most people will try to find a theme that matches their business objectives. So they would choose a theme that, that looks salesy if they're trying to sell stuff. They'll choose a theme that looks like you're showing off pictures for those that want to show photography or video editing or wedding photography. Um, so think the way you choose your theme is important. A lot of the themes that are out there are really easy to edit the color of. So if you like the layout of the, of the theme, it's usually fairly simple to also change the color if you didn't like the color to match your own brand. There's modules. Um, modules are basically like your plugins that add those extra functionalities that we talked about before. And I'm gonna show you some of my favorite modules in a little bit, um, but modules are important. And I, and I like to say there's, there's a module for almost everything, just like there's, always, there's almost an app for everything you want to do. Um, blocks inside of Drupal, those are just containers of content. So a Drupal website is made up of blocks or areas where you can put content. Um, the theme defines where the blocks are. And the last piece is nodes. And nodes are essentially are just content for your website. Um, and so you're gonna hear the word node a few times today, um, but a node as a whole is anything from a web page to an image or to just something like a, a price. Um, it's the content that your website is displaying. Some of my favorite plugins. Um, the first one, if you're doing a Drupal for anything, install the plugin called Path Auto. And this is really good for search engine optimization, uh, which is just a fancy word for allowing uh, search engines like Google to be able to read a link on your website and understand what it is. Um, so by default, uh, Drupal only gives you a random set, or, set of number or a numerical sense of numbers uh, every time you make a post. So your first thing you've uploaded is node one. The second thing you upload is node two, et cetera, et cetera, um, which makes search engines not understand the content that you're hosting. So using a tool like Path Auto, you can have those URLs automatically state something, um, whether that is your title of your website 
or the title of the post that you created, the title of the content, and automatically put that as the URL versus just the, rent, just the numbers. Um, and so this allows you to build patterns that make sense that then search engines can also understand and also makes it really great for your web users. Um, so instead of saying, go to my website, evolveproject.org 317 to find out about Drupal, I can just tell you to go to evolveproject.org Drupal to find out about Drupal um, if those pages existed. So hopefully that piece makes sense. So Path Auto makes your life simple and better. Always install that. Um, the next plugin that's useful is the CKE editor. And this is that WYSIWYG we talked about earlier. Um, by default, most content management systems, for whatever reason, don't include a WYSIWYG editor. So you have to install one or add one. Um, for Drupal, my personal favorite is CKE editor because it gives you the look and feel of just like Word, um, which, is, which is most people are comfortable with. So they know what the B means, it means bold, they know what the I means, uh, they know how to insert a picture or a table or a graph. What's great about Drupal is you don't have to do any of that fancy um, font coding as well. Um, it'll choose the font style and the font colors based on your theme. So you don't have to go, well, I want all hyperlinks to be orange on my website. The theme, if you set your theme up to say all hyperlinks are orange, it will do that for you. Um, so those are, those are my, my top two favorite uh, themes that I think everyone should install. CKE Editor, CKE Editor and Path Auto. Um, the other piece that we talked about, like the, the frameworks of Drupal is blocks. Um, so at a high level, this is what blocks are. Um, so you have your theme of your website and your theme defines where these blocks are. And so you can put content. So you can put any kind of content in what's called the secondary menu. Um, and that doesn't have to necessarily mean a menu. You can put plain text if you wanted, as suggested. Um, and so that's how it's really easy to build Drupal websites then, because you know, if I want a piece of content on this page across all my pages, you can define that. Uh, and the last thing we talked about, or the last framework piece is a node. And again, a node is anything that's content. Um, so every time you upload a picture, create a new page, you're giving a node and that node has a number. If you're using Path Auto, you can put an actual URL instead of a number. Um, all the nodes you choose, you can create what kinds. Um, so by default, you're given like a, a web page and an article uh, as your nodes. Um, but then you can create specific nodes based on what you're trying to do. So if you're building recipes, for instance, you can build a, build a piece of content called a recipe that will ask you recipe-driven information to make a very specific article or a very specific post. Um, in other words, you're def you define what kind of content should be included in each of those um, types of nodes. Um, and I'll show you that when we do our live demo. Um, and the other piece that's important to know about Drupal is taxonomy. And all taxonomy is, is metadata. Um, so when we're talking about metadata, that's being able to tag or categorize your posts. So if you're, if you're tagging photos of nature as nature, you can actually add taxonomy around it, call it nature, and then you can then use a tool called views to pull everything that's related to nature. And I'll also show you that today too. Um, in general, so what views allows you to do is it takes those nodes and organizes them in such a way um, that your end users can, can digest it. So if you have a whole bunch of uh, HR files, for instance, for each employee has their own HR page, and you wanted a view to list all of those employees, you would use this tool called views and you would, you would filter based off that type of content uh, and it would automatically show up. And, I, and I'll show you this in, as part of the live demo. I know it's kind of hard to understand, understand from an abstract point of view, um, but in general, it allows you, so views are a way to, like think of it as a pivot table um, where we're taking data or content and we're going to display it in a meaningful way. Uh, and uh, if, you, if you've done Excel, um, a pivot table is probably the best analogy or, or relation that you can draw from it. And a really sweet thing about Drupal is you can do some really um, fine-grained permission policies. Um, so if you, if you have different types of content that you can upload to your Drupal page, you can say only Bob and Sally can upload images and only George can create new websites and only, only Susan can post blog posts. And you can define all these roles in Drupal very easily. Um, 
again, without any sense of coding or um, technical expertise. So to get started with Drupal, um, there's the installation way. Um, your core requirements, so if you're looking at a web host, um, these are what you need. You'll need a, a web host that gives you access to a database. Um, MySQL is preferred, um, but you can also do uh, a Marion database instead. PHP versions, uh, 7.3 or higher. Um, and then you need a, a, a web server. Um, so your web host was probably running Apache. Uh, things to keep in mind for those that are more technical. Um, Light PD is a caching service that you can use for your Drupal website to make it run better. Engix is another very popular caching service. Um, the thing is that Drupal doesn't always play very well with it. Um, so you have to be fairly familiar with servers um, to know what types of things that you don't want cached because um, it'll mess up things such as image re rendering and uh, the loading of PowerPoint files or PDFs. But just in general, these, these four things is what, is what you need for your website. Um, hard disk size depends on how much content you have. Um, you can run a Drupal website very easily with less than a gig. Um, but if you're uploading images, that gig disappears relatively quickly. Um, if you have a lot of videos, you'll need a few gigs. Um, installation is very, very simple. Um, you're able to download Drupal from their website. Uh, it gives you a zip file that you then extract into your web server. Um, when you extract it, you also want to make sure you have a, a database created ahead of time. And all it is is a, is a blank shell that Drupal can talk to to populate content. Um, so your web, you or your web host creates a database with a user and password. Um, when you fire up your Drupal installation uh, on your web server, and this requires very little coding. Um, when, you, when you upload your Drupal web page um, and you point to the URL, it'll then ask you to, hey, where's this database at? You give it the username and password, and then it installs everything for you. Um, it's as easy as this. Um, you literally just choose what kind of install you want, your site information, your uh, and then your, your database name, username, password. You basically do those four things, and then it does everything else for you. Um, to get to this this page, the f the, the the file location where you uploaded that uh, uh, Drupal download is where you would just point the website to, and it does the rest for you. Um, so in general, use cases. Um, some people have used Drupal to host content of files, um, so creating music videos and arts, and using it to showcase what you've created. Um, and other people will then allow you to sell it. Uh, the best selling tool that I've seen is called Magento. Um, a lot of people use Drupal for internet, in webs internet information. Um, and the reason for that is a lot easier to learn than SharePoint. Uh, and then obviously people use Drupal for either personal or professional websites. So um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Are there any questions with the first half of the, the presentation today? Anything you want me to recover? Or are you ready to go do a deep dive? As people are typing, I'm going to stop sharing and share my browser instead. So hopefully everyone can now see my browser. Let me throw up the chat box again. All right, I don't see any questions. So uh, in general, the way Drupal works is when you go to their web page, um, you have the download and extend tab. Uh, so the download page allows you to drop, download those core versions of Drupal. Um, then you're able to download the modules that you want. You can search for things. The most popular ones are listed first. And then your themes. So if everyone wants to, feel free to tag along. So if everyone goes to simplytest.me, Uh, this is what we're going to use today to kind of demo uh, Drupal. So we're going to enter a project name, and what we're going to type in is Drupal Core. You're going to get another box that appears, and choose version 8.9.0. Once you've done that, you'll see a launch sandbox to the right. So I want everyone to go ahead and click launch sandbox. 
this takes a few minutes, especially since there are 14 of us probably all clicking on it at the same time. Uh, so as that loads, I will show you my Drupal uh, installation. Oh, there, so it'll say submission is queued. After about a minute or two, it'll then show you a whole bunch of text and then you'll be brought to your website. Um, so this is this is the content of my my website. So this is the back end of my of my webpage, evolveproject.org. Um, and you'll see the list of modules that I'm using. Let me go to one that I configured. Um, so like the C, the CKE editor uh, would be listed in here, your, your uh, tools, things like that. I will show you what views looks like live because that's probably the best example I can show you. Okay, so. Uh, so on my on my website, I, I work with a lot of. So my background is working with libraries and startup companies that develop educational tools for people to learn how to code and program. So my site, I work with a lot of different startup companies. So this is a view, and I have my view sortable based off of how I've tagged them. So as people click on things, it will then pivot to those types of data. So I have content called startups. Uh, that this view then pulls from. So here's the code for that. Um, so all this is doing, uh, and so and then the theme does the fancy coding or, or the fancy design. Um, so all I'm doing is telling this view uh, to pull content that's called startup. So I've created content called startup and every time it sees that piece, it'll throw it into that into this view on my web page. And then as people look at, as I create more startups, I don't have to go back to a web page to update anything. The view does it for me. So hopefully that makes sense. If it does not, tell me and I'll explain it in a different way. Um, but again, in, in a sense, what a view allows you to do is pull content without having to update multiple other web pages. It's a pivot table of data. All right, I'm gonna close that. All right, so it looks like it's, for most of us, we're probably still running this uh, simply test.me. And it should almost be done for everybody. If there are other questions, feel free to type them in the box as uh, simply test.me loads. Those last 80, the last 12 percent is really hanging on. As it does that, I will also show you the recommended website. So themeforest.net, um, you can buy a really nice Drupal theme for about 60 bucks on average. Um, the way this website works is just type in what kind of content you want to share or, or, or your website. So if you're selling something, put in what you're selling. So let's do. Um, I don't know, photography. And so now what I'll give you a, is a list of themes developed for photographers. I'm gonna click on the link. You can do a live preview. And that's always a good sign. Uh, so if you see the, the website not load, it's, it's usually on the developer's end. So we'll just choose a different one. Preview. So then you're able to kind of play with everyone's Drupal page before you buy just to see how it works and if it's what you want. And you're like, yep, this matches my division that I have for my website. Here's my brand. I think this works great. Um, and then you would just purchase and install. Um, in the exact same way I showed you earlier with the Drupal page. So awesome. Our Drupal site's been created. Our URL is 
long and confusing because again, this is only temporary. It's not meant to be production. Uh, to log in, we just click log in on the right. The default password when you use simply test.me is admin admin for both username and password. If you were to install Drupal on your own, um, part of that installation process will ask you what would you like as your username and password. So we've reached the administration side of the website. The first thing I always tell people to do is configure your page to make sure people know it's you. And that's under basic site settings. So we're gonna call the site name do space Drupal demo. I can type learning Drupal is fun. So we do a site name, name, and email address. This will be like your administrative email address. Um, so when people request password resets, uh, fill out forms, it will show from uh, that account. Um, the other piece is your default front page. Uh, so your Drupal web page by default will show your most recent posts. Um, you can also tell it to look at a very specific web page, and that's your front page. Um, so I will show you how to set that up in a bit. So we'll hit save configuration. So now if everyone wants to see the website we built or I built, I pasted it there. So now when you go to the web page, you'll see two space Drupal demo. Uh, on your side, feel free to do whatever you like. And if you are following along, feel free to post or paste your um, simply test generated URL um, for all to see. So we've, we've, we've set up our site name and slogan. Let's create the first piece of content. So it's very simple to create content. We hit content, add content. Um, by default, you either choose article or basic page. Again, think of articles like blog posts. Since we don't have pages yet, let's make one. So we're gonna do basic page. Uh, the title, we're gonna call it uh, Welcome to Body. This is my first page. This, is, this, this will be my home page. I'm gonna hit save. Um, so as you notice, the URL for this website, or this page is slash node one. So when I go to my page, since I don't have a front page defined, it doesn't know what to show. So I have to tell it that. So now that I know it's slash node one, I go to back to configuration, basic site settings. And now I do this, save. So now when I go to my website, I now have an actual front page. So that's how we get our first page to kind of show and, and load up. To edit any, any, of these, any of these pieces of content that we see on our website, so these are all the blocks that are inside of our theme. So if I go to structure, block layout, this shows me where all those blocks are. If I don't know what they mean or where they're at, there's a for every theme, there's a button that says demonstrate block regions. I click on it uh, and it lets me know where all those regions names are because I don't know how to add, where to add content. Um, so you can specify when you want a block to appear on which page. So for, as, as a good example, um, people will put like a contact us form on pages that require or where they want people to fill out a format. Uh, instead of directing everyone to click on contact us, they may create a form that then appears on very specific pages. Um, so just as an example, I'll create a, uh, a block for my search bar area. So I will do place block. Just do a custom one just for giggles. Is it a test? Save. Um, so after you create your, 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 your um, block, um, you can then tell it where to show or where not to show. So show for only specific pages. So I can do this node slash one, uh, but any other pieces of content won't show it. So I'll show you. So save. Oops. Do for the first save block. So I'm gonna go back to my website. So I've created this block called this is a test. And it's only gonna show on 
node one or content piece one that I made. So now I'm going to add another piece of content. I'll call this one me. A few of the other features that you see on the right, um, since we are we want the about me to be a, a main a main menu link, we just check a box, and now it will start building us a navigation menu. URL alias. So if we're not using path auto, it's going to do that default node one, or you're just typing what you want it to be. So I'm going to just do slash about. I'm going to hit save. So now I've created an about me page, and there's a now link or a navigation button for about me. And as you notice, that block I made that says only a show up for node one is not showing up here. Does that all make sense so far? How we understand content and blocks and how we can make blocks appear on specific pages? Awesome. Uh, second thing I wanna show you is how easy it is to install either modules or themes. So when we wanna install a module, we go to appearance we're gonna click install new theme. There's a link that says install from URL. This will not work. If you're doing install URL, you have to follow the install directions from whichever vendor you buy. But if you're downloading a theme straight from Drupal, this process works. So Drupal has a few themes that you can choose from. Um, we're gonna do adaptive themes. So you can see what it looks like and kind of what it does. Um, sometimes they'll have a link to give you a demo. We're going to copy this tar.gz file. And we're going to do copy link address. Oops. I'm going to put paste. So I've now pasted this, this download link install. So this usually won't happen in a, uh, a live setting. Uh, this is just because we're using uh, this free tool. It looks like they've changed their settings recently where you can't install modules. But that's how easy it is to install a module or a theme. Go back a page. Um, so that's installing a module or a theme. If you're doing installing a module, you would click extend. And no worries. Um, what all we're doing right now is showing you how easy it is to install something. Um, so if you want to install either a theme or a template, a theme or a module, we use the Drupal website to search for what we're looking for. And then we're going to click install module paste the link that we that we found from the module or thing we like, and you hit install, and then Drupal installs it for you. Hopefully that clears things up a tad. Uh, the other piece I wanna show you today uh, is how to set up different types of content. So I mentioned earlier that your content uh, allows you, you can change how you want your content to be displayed. Um, so one of the best examples I always like to show people is, let's say we're building a website about cooking um, and we want recipe cards. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a content type. And again, our two types of content type are article and basic page. It's very simple. We're gonna click add content type and we're gonna give it a name. And we're gonna call it uh, recipe, I can spell. This is my secret cooking ideas. You can ignore the other settings. We're going to just hit save. So now what we got to do is tell, uh, remember when we built our, our basic page, or our basic, yeah, our basic pages, we, we had just one box. Or we had a box for title and a box for body. Um, what we're going to do is add fields. So we're going to do and then, so these, it looks confusing. It looks complicating. So the stuff you take. Yeah, I can show the end result. Um, and so what I'm doing now is building the form out. So when people want to, or so when my end users build recipes, 
they all follow the exact same process. I don't want people to, to have different layouts for recipe cards. So if you think of it, if you go to um, like a, what's the is it food network? Um, all the recipes follow the same format. They have an image, uh, there we go. So they have an image, they have the levels, ingredients and directions. Believe it or not, there's not someone that takes that has to code this every single day. Uh, it's they're filling out a form and then the, the content management system knows how to populate that data. So we're gonna duplicate it. Um, for us, most of our things are gonna just be text. Um, so we're gonna do this, we're gonna give it a label of uh, ingredients. Save and continue. So now we can choose the length and how many values we'll do unlimited. Let's save. So now what I've done is allow people to, when they're, when they're filling out ingredients, uh, it will force them to fill out, uh, or follow the, follow the same pattern. Same settings. Uh, and now we also want to do an image. So we'll do uh, image. Okay. So now I've created three fields. I've created a, oops, sorry. I've created a field for body so I can describe what I'm cooking, um, my picture and then my ingredients. So now if I go to content, add content. So remember before we only had article and basic page. Well, I made one for recipes. So now I have my title. Uh, we'll do mac and cheese. This is my favorite meal. So my ingredients, again, are going to be uh, cheese. To add another item, noodles. Milk. And now I need to choose an image. We'll do. We'll find a nice image of mac and cheese. That looks good. We'll save the image. And actually, come to think of it, since I don't know if the website lets us upload images, so we'll find out. It does. So now I've created a very basic uh, form. So now every time when people fill out recipes, it will be this format, no matter who does it. Now let's say over time, you're like, you know what, Brian, we've made all these recipe cards and I don't want the final, in, final picture to be at the bottom. I want it to be at the top. If you weren't using a content management system, what you would have to do is go into every single one of your posts, edit that post, and hate life for a while as you do so. It's easy now with a content manager system. So we go back to our content, uh, content types. We're gonna go to our recipes. And we're gonna change the display. So this is what the end result looks like. And I'm gonna click on this one that says picture and move it to the top and hit save. So now let's go back to that piece of content we made for mac and cheese. And the image is now at the top. Um, we can take this a step farther. Uh, whenever you download pictures or take pictures, you know how they're always different sizes. And that really angers people, it confuses people. Uh, when we're looking at this website, every single recipe has the exact same image size. And that's because there's a tool called a resizer. So what we're gonna go do is, is tell it to be a very specific size. So we go back to our content, go to our content types. I'm gonna manage the display. And for image, we're gonna edit. And we're gonna tell it to use a medium sized picture update. So now no matter what size of the image you choose, it will shrink it to fit a medium size. 
So let me hit save. And so now it's been redesigned no matter the size of the image to always be the correct size. So hopefully that got your feet wet enough to understand content, content types, and how we can pull content together very simply uh, without having to go to each and every page that we've ever developed if we changed our mind on the, on the layout and view. Uh, I know we have 14 more minutes left, but I want to leave it open for any questions or comments. Um, I know some of it's very complicated, but think of it this way. Go to simplytest.me and play. You can't break it. Um, nothing that you can do will break a Drupal web page, especially for, if it's not your own site. Um, I caveat this by saying if you do go into production, you have a website that's live, the world can see. Um, what I do professionally is I have to I duplicate my website twice. So I have one that the world can see and one that's my playground and I call that the dev side. Um, and it's just two different URLs. And so I'll play in dev. If I broke something, no harm, no foul, I delete it. And then I recopy my production site back into my dev environment so I can play and tinker. Um, and that's the, the best and easiest way to make sure you don't uh, damage anything. Uh, some, of the, some of the questions were, what are the major pros and cons of Drupal sites versus WordPress? Um, so for me, so for me I, I use both. Uh, I have a preference to Drupal because I, I feel personally that there's more modules out there that allow me to do what I want to do and accomplish than WordPress has. Um, for me, WordPress themes and modules seem, or modules, they call them plugins, uh, are much more limited. The other side of it though is WordPress has a ton of free themes. Like there are so many websites out or so many services out there that give out free WordPress themes, whereas Drupal themes, there's not that many great ones. Um, and so like the free ones are basically all on the Drupal website. Um, let me go back to themes. So yeah, there's 2,869, but 2,860 kind of suck. Um, they're not that great. Uh, they take a lot of tinkering and playing. Um, but on the, on the positive note, it's a lot easier to edit the style of a Drupal uh, template than a WordPress template. And I'll show you what I mean. Um, so on my website, if I wanted to change colors, right, this one's a little bit more advanced. Um, so I have these different predefined skins. So I can just click on a button and my entire website will change color based on these preloaded skins I have um, without any fancy coding or anything crazy. It's, it's all built in. Um, but in general, though, they're very, uh, Drupal, Drupal seems to give you a lot more options uh, than WordPress in terms of like its uh, extensibility. Um, WordPress, however, though, is simplified um, with an emphasis on building free themes for people to use. So hopefully that answers it. Um, if you're willing to get your, get your hands a little dirty with some, some tinkering and playing, Drupal's for you. Um, if you're like, no, I just kind of just want something that I can hit a button and everything that I basically will need is there, uh, that's WordPress. If you want to do something more advanced, like building those recipe cards that I showed you in Drupal, it's not very easy to do in WordPress because again, they, it's, it's simplified. You get what you get and use what you, get what you have. Um, Drupal allows you to build what you don't have without coding. Are there any other questions? I should have... I thought about that afterward. I did have a slide once for uh, comparing Drupal and WordPress. Um, I should have brought that with. I will throw up my contact information too as people ask questions. Um, the top five are uh, chaos tools, which is just a bunch of uh, API integrations that allow you to connect to integration services. Um, CK editor for your WYSIWYG because it gives you the most options and it's very similar to Word. Um, Path Auto uh, does that URL renaming and token, I believe, is one of the other top five that allow you to, um, uh, I'm trying to give it a less complex way to, to describe it. Uh, so content can be tagged um, with like a variable and tokens can leverage those variables to reuse content or reuse pieces of information. Um, let me go back to this PowerPoint really quick. Um, so I have a slide that shows the top plugins 
Uh, so yeah, top plugins, chaos tools, token, um, path auto views. And that's that tool set that works like a pivot table where you can um, push content from, or push multiple pieces of content into a single page or block um, versus having to re-engineer the wheel. Um, and then the rest are just like APIs. Um, web form allows you to build interactive forms. So when people fill out like a contact us form, you can have it get, send an email, send a follow-up, uh, that kind of thing. Go back to chat. Um, the other question was, if I wanted to do a private web page, can Drupal be used for free, similar to Google Sites? Yes, it can. So if you wanted to do it private, you would, when you install Drupal, um, you would install it on a, a private web server, either that you're protecting through um, HD access with a password or, or IP address, or you would have your website installed like on an internal server that doesn't have access to the outside world. Um, but that's what, when people build internet websites, that's usually their, their, their path of action is to host it on an internal server um, that has no outside access. Are there any other questions? Oh, and I'll throw my contact info up. So we do have questions after the fact. Feel free to email me, um, write me on Twitter, whatever you like. Um, I'm here to help you learn and explore. Uh, if you're looking for web hosting ideas or web hosting services, feel free to ask. Um, I've used Bluehost, but I also, have, I also run my own uh, web hosting farm um, that people can use and leverage. Uh, thanks for attending. Uh, you've all been great. Hopefully uh, you were able to play with the simply test dot website. Um, and again, if you're still unsure what, what, what to use, leverage it, play with it. Again, you can't, especially if it's running off that simply test site, you can't break it cause it's not yours. Um, so play, explore, just keep in mind everything you do at one, at some point will disappear um, because it's just a, a testing ground or, or a playground.